Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falco Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft 2 Legacy of the Void. Today, for your Sunday, it's going to be Clem and Cyril. This is a replay from Pig as part of his Pig Fest tournament that he held recently. Check him out on YouTube. There's a link in the description. If you're a Twitch person as well, there's a link to his Twitch channel. He is an excellent caster. He is funny. He knows a lot about the game and he casts professionally. So check him out if you like StarCraft 2. Top left, it's going to be Glem, and in the bottom left on Altitude, it's going to be Serral. Is Altitude the new macro map? Well, not as macro as Gressfin. That is certainly the case. Just a lot of macro games on this map. Not as many as Gressfin, but a number two in that category. So hatching first here is Serral. No proxies here from Clem. Pretty darn standard game here today. And ka-chow, there is the hatchery at 16 supply. Oh, yeah. Terry the Overlord moving out. What up, Terry? That's right, Terry. Things are good. You're flying over this lake of methane, or maybe it's just water. Who knows? We're not down there taking samples. It's an alien planet, though, so you can't really take anything for granted. You know what I mean? Like, if we ever manage to get to different planets in the galaxy and we find one that's kind of Earth-like, we can't just be like, well, that looks like water. It's water. No, 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 no. Gotta treat everything like it's incredibly dangerous, even if it looks innocuous, right? I think that's how it should work anyway. I'm not in charge of any planetary exploration duties. Should humanity ever develop a spaceship fast enough to get to other planets that might be Earth-like in a human lifespan? I don't know. We might have to do generational ships, right? Where, you know, you get on a ship planning on dying, but then your kids, or maybe their kids, will finally get to a planet that potentially could house earth life uh, like human life and then they developed something there but i don't know that sounds kind of crazy to me to be honest with you like what if something went wrong there's just nothing you can do i guess that's the same thing for mars though you're far enough away from earth there's just if something goes wrong you're just gonna die anyway we got clem scv scouting just pops make sure it's a hatch first cool stuff we can send the reaper across the map the reaper's name is oscar bluth this time on halted progress, due to an unfortunate mix-up, Oscar was sent to the Reaper program instead of his brother. And hilarity ensues. Ah, man, Arrested Development, seriously. Like, it's Arrested Development seasons one and two. And three? What was the original run? Three seasons? Some of the best comedy, like, in the history of comedy. If you haven't seen Arrested Development, you should watch it. The season four that Netflix did, like, two or three years ago, not, not even close to as good. They tried some weird experimental, like, chronological order storytelling stuff, and I just... I mean, whatever. Just do what you did in 1 through 3, guys. But yeah, recommend it. Recommend Falcon stuff for sure. On the other side, Clem's gonna go for some Hellions. He's got a third base coming up at 250. Yep, everything is normal third base. Sub 3 minutes from Serral 2. Pretty fast third base. Really only has the one queen at this point, but actually has the second queen here, but was delayed a tiny bit to get that third base down. Speed was delayed a tiny bit as well. It's fine. Clem has no intention of going for proxies or anything that would mess with Serral's attempt to be a little bit greedier on his side of the map. And in fact, Clem is being a little bit greedier himself. So Serral can 100% get away with it. So curious to see. Always curious to see what's going to go on in here. Probably lurkers from Serral. That is in the current meta. On the other side, Marines, Marauders, Metavacs, maybe Widow Mines, maybe Ghosts. We have, I don't know though, we have seen some games recently where just no ghosts are used from Terran, which feels like a mistake if the game gets past the 15 minute mark. You can kind of get away with it if it's the first 12 to 13 minutes, into 14 it gets dicey, but then suddenly you're dealing with vipers and you're dealing with investors and maybe even, you know, lurkers are out with seismic spines and then you just, if you don't have any ghosts, you just kind of are a sad panda at that point. But Banshees with Cloak on the way from Clem, no real surprise there. Hellions harassing down to the south. All is well. What vision does Cyril have today? Uh, he's going. Okay, he's going for it. He's going for the vision now. But oh no, two Marines! Ba -ba 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 -ba. Get out of here, Terry the Overlord. We don't serve your kind here. We'll shoot at you with our guns. Right on, right on, Raiders. Uh, Lair on the way. Roachworn coming in here too from Cyril. Yeah, Roach is going to be fine against this Hellion pressure, absolutely, and terrible against the Banshees. But that's what the Queens are for. There's already six of them. With uh, probably more to come. I imagine that Cyril's not going to make six queens today and then stop. Although he kind of has for the time being. Intriguingly enough. Anyway, we all know this stuff. What else is going on? Oh, John Mulaney put out a, a comedy special on Netflix. 
that I just discovered was on Netflix today when I'm casting this on April 26th. But anyway, man, I love John Mulaney. So it's all, I mean, I don't know. If you don't know, then he was all over the news because he like went through rehab for like cocaine addiction and stuff and got divorced. And it's been a rough couple of years for that dude. But I guess he's back, and I guess he's recovered, and he did, a, like, the first part of his comedy special I was able to get through in the time that I had is all dealing with his intervention and checking into rehab and stuff, so he's very upfront with it, which I can appreciate. Like, I really think this is, it's not, like, an insanely common thing that happens for people to get addicted to drugs, but I think it's getting more and more common with, like, the oxy problem and stuff that's going on, at least in America. I don't know what other countries are dealing with that, but, yeah, it was, I just think it was a positive thing for him to come out and, you know, be open about it. He's telling jokes, too, but, you know, he's not making light of what happened. He's like, yeah, I was, I was really screwed up. <laughs> like, it was bad. Anyway, recommended. Meanwhile, Cloak Banshees are here because you don't have a spore at your third base yet. Five drones died. Clam. Huge opening. Guess who's German taxiing? Oh, that's right. Our guy, Cyril, is German taxi. Roaches, ravagers, queens. Gonna come over here and poop some creep. Queens will be transfusing. This third base of Clems is probably not going to be a thing. Just throwing that out there. Although, I don't know. Cyril's going to tr just try to kill Clem now instead of going after his third base. That's an option as well. But yeah, Overlords coming in. The Banshees are like, we got you now. But, oh, hang on. They have cloaks. You don't, um, you don't have an Overseer. Dude, where is your... Make this Dropper Lord an Overseer, I guess. I don't know. Banshee oh, the Banshees ran out of energy for Cloak. That's not good, dude. Creep Tumor's getting planted in your natural base. Clem is supply blocked. He's losing SCVs. Not by, like, the dozens, but it's looking bad. Gross of Bile takes... Ooh, does take down the bunker. Siege tank on the high ground is a big deal here, too, though. This is an insane attack from Serral. I'm loving it. Get him. Get... Okay, Queen's getting picked off. The Banshee... Okay, one Banshee gets picked off. There's another... Okay, Banshee's dead. But enough Marines here to stutter stim forward, maybe. Clem has to back it out a little bit as Ling's come in to buffer a little bit too. 17 SCVs have died. However, Clem still has a worker lead of 30. Okay, never mind, it's gone. And it's gone. It's that South Park sketch that everybody knows because it's been memed to death. Yeah, that worker lead, it's gone. 28 SCVs have died, but Cyril's running out of steam on the other side here too. He's only got a Ravager and a couple Ling's remaining. Uh, more SCVs dying is good. The third base has been entirely abandoned here. So, uh, Clem's alive. He's got creep all over his natural base and, like, kind of pushing up into his main a little bit. And his third base is a ghost down. He has to lift and retreat that into the main. So that's not good. But, uh, well, I mean, there is no but here. It's 45 to 27 workers. Cyril just put an absolutely killer blow here on Clem. Just right hook, right to the jawline. Bam! Knocked Clem down, but he's getting back up off the mat now. It's not a TKO, or else there'd be a GG already. Okay, so Cyril went for the two and a half base. Roach Ravager all in, bringing the German Taxi Queens along, which is awesome. That's a, I mean, that's a way to deal with the Banshees, because I talk about it all the time. You show up with Roaches and Ravagers at a Terran base, and they have two Banshees, you just kind of die. Like, your Roaches and Ravagers can't do jack about that, but that's why you have Queens. He brought the Queens along. Cyril, you genius. Truly a genius. We see German taxi stuff against Protoss way more than against Terran, but I kind of like it. That said, Clem is alive. Clem has mules, so the income is actually closer to even than it probably should be considering the 57 to 38 worker discrepancy in favor of the Zerg player right now. So that's the problem. I love you, Clem. You're a great player. Oh, Ling drop it inside the main base. Dude, every SCV is just precious right now for Clem. Oh, look at him defend, deflecting at that third base, too. Ling's got into the natural base and killed some some SCVs as well. I just... Oof. So, look. It's 189 supply. The army is bigger for Clem, but Serral has a massive worker advantage. However, he does not have a base count advantage. As Clem's third base exists, and Serral doesn't have a fourth base, he's maybe considering it. But he's just defending Clem's little attempts to kind of throw Serral off his game. He's defending with roaches. And I guess he's going to add some ravagers to the mix as well. Got four of them in production there. All right. Here we go. Here goes nothing. I just... Clem is just trying to keep... Keep Serral on the back foot. So Serral doesn't... Oh, my gosh. Did we just drop more links? Mm, three more SCVs have died. Does he have Burrow? If he would have burrowed if he had Burrow. And he doesn't have Burrow. So all the links die. 
Dude, this I, this overlord is invisible on the minimap. Can you see that overlord on the minimap? No, of course you can't. Man, is he off the map? Mm, gotta fix that. Come on, Blizz. Well, come on, Activision. <laughs> fix your game. Uh, really wish somebody owned Blizzard that cared about the StarCraft IP. I really do. And not in a how can we monetize it way. Just loves it. Just loves it and supports it and helps it to grow. That's what I want. It's probably asking a lot. And the Microsoft acquisition of Activision Blizzard was actually uh, blocked. So that's not happening anytime soon. If I understand the news correctly, and maybe I don't. But Clem trying to find a place to pressure. But Cyril is the king at this deflect, deflect, deflect strategy. He invented it. He was the first Zerg player to be like, okay, I know that our units are fast. And that makes us want to be aggressive. But who? what if... We just defended all the time while getting a huge economy. And then we go kill our enemies instead of being like low econ, fast attack stuff. And everybody was like, that's stupid. And Serral made it work and won a world championship. And now every Zerg player is like, oh, I guess that's how we're supposed to play it. That's how Blizzard designed it. The Zerg race is designed for this, right? The speed boost, you get to creep queens that are fast on creep and slow off creep like... Yeah, oh, a fungal Batman. We haven't seen a fungal in some time. Oh my gosh, that was beautiful. Siege tanks, no, they're dead. Oh my god. So Clem standing in and fighting. I appreciate the bravery here. And actually, okay. Man, Marines are tough little guys. They are strong, strong dudes. Like, these are tier 1 units. I guess they have the support of medevacs, but man, Ravagers are like a tier 2.5 unit. Okay, that's not true. They're like a 1.5 unit. 1.75. How do we determine that? I don't know. Ravagers, man. Not intended. Not intended to deal with marines like that. Hydralisk den on the way. Hive on the way here from Serral. Obviously the infestation pit because we saw uh, some fungal. Going down there. First fungal on the channel in some time. You have to repair the supply depot now. Aha, says Cyril. So he yes, here at 12 minutes, I do feel like Cyril has a pretty fantastic handle on the situation here. Hey, look, Burrow's getting researched. He's like, man, I keep doing this little Ling stuff and I want to burrow him, but I can't. Might as well get Burrow, I suppose. Clem's not doing anything nuts. I mean, he's also not investing in Widow Mines at all, nor ghosts. He has a Liberator. That's hardly investing in Liberators, though. That is... That is definitely uh, investing in a Liberator, which is a different different thing altogether. Lurker Den, hey look, what do I say about Lurkers? They're just the meta. Rainer absolutely changed the meta for ZVT. For whatever reason, Lurkers, when they were introduced in uh, Legacy of the Void, they were considered super OP in the beta. Like a lot of players were playtesting the Lurker in ZVT and they were like, holy crap, how do you deal with Lurkers as Terran? And then, I don't know if they got nerfed or whatever, but when the game released, Lurkers were just bad. And like, especially against Terran. Nobody ever used them. And then a couple of years later, Rainer was like, you know, what if we use them like this? And bam. That was it. That was the reintroduction of Lurkers into the meta. I don't think Lurkers got necessarily buffed enough to be the reason they're used. It's just Rainer showed everyone how to use them. Another massive part of the meta. Like, that is the power a good player can have can completely change a matchup change you know change what everyone's doing it's pretty cool honestly i like that kind of stuff in my starcraft seismic spines on the way hey ghost academy on the here inside the mineral line that is mined out from clem so he's gonna have some of those ghosts plus three armors on the way for the ground carapace for zerg that is uh that is pretty fast here at 13 minutes for them. 2-2 two -two is about halfway done here from Clem. Production tab helping us with that. This thing down below as well. I'm gonna guess there's a Liberator. Yep. You know what would be nice? You know how there's a little ping on the map when a nuke gets launched or there's a pickup that happens? A little ping on the map when a Liberator sets up in defender mode would be pretty awesome. Clem! Doom dropping. Okay, it's not like a massive doom drop, but it's pretty big. Oh, well the army was here. Never mind, it's fine. Quick, abuse the fact that the Roaches and Raviders suck at going down to this low ground, but oh no, Cyril's covering that too. Look, the fact that Clem's at 180 supply at 14 minutes after absolutely getting his natural base wrecked to start this game off is awesome. 
Clem's macro is, I don't want to say it's unmatched, but it is 100% elite. It is top five macro in the StarCraft world. It, it's inspiring. It really is. He just, that's his superpower. His superpower is just being able to macro off of a situation that didn't seem, didn't seem viable. See these lurkers having to run from these Marines? <laughs> That's how you're not supposed to use lurkers. Oh my gosh, and the lurkers' inability to... Oh my gosh, this little group is amazing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Roach is doing some tanking for the lurkers. That's how it's supposed to be. I love that Clem jukes back around and says, I can get this hatch. No, you can't. Serral's not going to abandon it entirely. Clem coming down this left side. Free Overlord. Nice. Serral not supply blocked because, well... He has too many overlords for that. And, ooh, drone down, drone down, drone down. Eight drones killed just like that. And this hatchery getting focused. The fungal not going to save it, but oh my gosh. You can't get picked up by medevacs when you're fungled. That is, man, we really should see more fungal in ZVTs. It's amazing. Just for the pickup prevention alone. Oh my gosh, he's going to get this hatch too. Okay, this game might have just reached epic status. Clem went from being down 20 workers to wiping out two of Serral's bases and knocking Serral back down to three bases at the 15-minute mark where Clem's on four. And has a worker lead. Clem, you monster. Look at that income tab go. Whoop, right up into Clem's side of things. Now that Serral just lost his two newest sources of income. Lurker drop in the main. I mean, cute. But there's no workers to kill. Whatever. Serral says, I need to get something done. So he marches across the map. He kills siege tanks. There are ghosts here, though. They are ready to snipe you right in the face. Fungal gets tossed down on a bunch of them ghosts. EMP is getting thrown down on the Infestors, too. The Spellcaster battle is real. Is there enough Zerg here to actually push on and kill one of these bases? Absolutely not. Zero percent. Ghosts are dying in defense of their homeland. Hold on. More Zerg forces coming from the south, though. Snipes. Snipes, dude. Dude, the back and forths alone in this game, I am tempted to consider epic. This has been crazy go nuts. 68 to 60 workers. Serral has reclaimed the worker lead. He has replanted the bases that died just a minute ago because he's good that way. But Clem, I mean, look, Clem is on uh, five bases right now. So Serral needed to kill a base there. It was nice that he killed some ghosts and some siege tanks and marines and stuff. It was. Dude, also adrenal, though. <sighs> I mean, look. Serral is not using Zerglings all that much. He has 30 of them, but it's really largely going to be Lurker Hydra Infester. I don't know. What's your mineral dump? These guys. These Lings. That'd be so much better if they had adrenal. Uh, guys? Okay. You gotta attack something. I don't know. This Lurker position is super annoying, but... Ow. Ghosts can't quite get snipes off. They're getting interrupted. That was a good one, though. He's making more links. Get Adrenal, you insane person. Hey, these roaches are back at the third base. They just took down an orbital that didn't lift. Oh, no. Ah, that Serral gets the win. Clem GG's out because his third base is dying. His natural base is dying. Okay, stop. We can stop. Stop still attacking here. Serral's getting a sixth base on the left side. If this third base dies and... I don't know. We got to take a look at the game state here, but hit that like, man. I mean, look, the fact that Serral got so much damage on in the early attack really helped him get to this point 17 minutes later, but... Clem had the lead there for a hot minute. He really did. It's just the lurker count was so high and the tanks were gone and the ghost count wasn't hot. And then he didn't really have anything. I don't know. He was making ghosts and like siege tanks and marauders and stuff. It feels premature. Yeah. So it was just a bunch of hydras inside your base. Uh, this third is... Pro I mean, just lift the orbital. Put it somewhere else. You'll be fine. This is happy. And this is really happy. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know about that, Clem. Army value is in favor of Serral here, 114 to 74, but look at this. There were still five ghosts, 15 marines, two marauders, six tanks, and six medevacs left from Clem at the end of the game. I mean, he's... He's alive! <laughs>
<laughs> but he's dead because he GG'd out. Oh, that's tough. That's a tough one. Clum actually ended up losing more resources through the first 18 minutes in this game than Serral did, which is okay. That's pretty bad. You don't want to lose more resources than a Zerg player, really, in any length of game, but in an 18-minute game especially, that one is tough. That's a tough, 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 tough one. Mm. I mean, he killed two hatcheries, lost an orbital to roaches, embarrassingly. Uh, 10 ghosts died, there were still 5 remaining. 13 tanks died, there were still 6 up there. The remaining army from Sarah was 9 hydras, 13 lurkers, and 13 roaches. I mean... I don't know. I just don't feel like that's insurmountable. But let me know in the comments anyway what you think. Right? Because... Uh, it's just tough. Like, I really hate second-guessing Clem's game sense. But I kind of want to do it. <laughs> like, I have more information about what's going on than he did when he GG'd out, right? I can see how many bases Serral has. Cyril doesn't even have the 6th base yet. Like, he's just barely repopulating here his 4th base and his 5th base. The happy income over here is just so happy from Clem. I would have liked to see him try to play it out a little bit. Like, try to save the natural, try to save the main, lift off this, use this high ground to your advantage so the lurkers can't really get up here and do anything. I guess that was the, one of another concern was... Oh, what's he lifting up for? So he lifts up and is like, I can save this. What does he see that makes him think that's not possible? These lings don't even have adrenal, Clem. Maybe that's it. Maybe he thought the lings had adrenal and that's why he was like, I'm not beating those lings. They've got adrenal glands. <laughs> Yeah, fine. I guess those lurkers could have just run up this ramp at any time and taken out this planetary. I mean, maybe. Like, he didn't take all of it. He, this is where the ghosts are. Well, this is where some of the ghosts are. Yeah, there's siege tank defending. Weird. All right. I'm just going to tack that up as a weird victory for sure. Who's still in the game? Pig? Pig is probably still in the game. Hey, be sure to check him out, man. Wow, a lot of people watching this. We got Coca, Fenrak, Funka, Crank. What up, Crank? I like Crank. Alg Soba's in here. And there we go. Pig of his own Pigpan clan has left the game. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, check out Pig. Just do it, man. Good stuff. All right. So, really, really fun stuff there from our two dudes, Clem and Serral. Serral gets the win. It's a weird, drawn-out situation where the early attack does a ton of work, but then Clem, I thought, was going to be able to make it more of a game. He had ghosts. Like, if he hadn't been able to take into ghosts yet, and all these lurkers show up, but he's got marines and, like, some marauders and a couple tanks, I'd be like, all right, you're dead. Mm, whatever. Great plague, though. Great plague. Plague. Woo! That's my brood war coming out. Great fungal though, fantastic fungals from Serral in this game, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna say the fungals are the reason that Serral won this. Not that Clem tapped out too early. Look, statistically, could Clem have come back? Yeah, but the chances were like maybe ten percent. So maybe he just said, "Let's move on to the next game and call it good." That's what it seems like. All right, neat. So uh, that right there is gonna be it from me. This has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void. Go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.